Here I have a 5500 series controller running code version 70220.0, which is the latest code version for the 5508. I just have a really basic configuration on this controller, and I'm just going to show you how you would configure a Cisco 3500 series AP to be an Office Extend access point. I have one AP associated to this controller, and I'm going to click into its AP name, and I'm going to change its operational mode from local to HREAP and click apply. The AP will reboot and then rejoin the controller in just a few moments and I'll pause the video and wait till it comes back. Okay, my AP is rejoined and now I can go back into the configuration mode of the access point, click on the HREAP tab and enable Office Extend on this Cisco 3500 series access point. When I do that, I'm presented with a couple of menus. I have the ability to either enable encryption or disable encryption. And I also have the ability to disable rogue detection. And these are two settings that are both recommended for Office Extend AP, so I'm going to select those. And you can see that uh, changing the data encryption will reboot the AP and it will rejoin the controller. And it also will tell me, look, you haven't configured your access point with either primary, secondary, or tertiary controller with its name and its IP address. So I'm going to go navigate over to um, the high availability and populate this with the controller's name. Copy that to the clipboard. Go back to my access point. High availability tab. Paste in the name and give it the IP address that I'm configured. Uh, for this controller for the management IP address and this will be the IP address that the AP will look for when it boots up uh, and is an Office Extend AP. So I'm going to enable HREAP and Office Extend. The access point will reboot and then rejoin the controller and you want to keep in mind that the the primary name is the, and the IP address that you're configuring in the access point is what that AP is going to look for once it's deployed as an Office Extend AP. So you will have your APs join your controller that's in the DMZ and has a publicly available IP address in order to use Office Extend APs to join that controller. If you do not have a controller in the DMZ, you would go into the management interface of the controller and you would enable NAT and you would put in the publicly available IP address that the, um, the firewall would be configured to do NAT address translation to uh, allow that AP to join the controller. I'm just choosing 5.5.5.5 just to let you know that it has to be a publicly routable IP address. Uh, by no means is this a valid IP address for the situation that I have uh, set up here, but um, that is where you would enable NAT for your controller interface. So you can see I have the AP joined. It's set up with the high availability for the name and IP address. Uh, HREAP mode is Office Extend AP. You can see the other boxes are um, not really uh, selectable. You can't select VLAN support when this is an Office Extend AP. And um, there are some other settings that are not available on a Cisco 3500 that's operating as Office Extend versus the Office Extend AP Model 600. And you can see what those differences are by reading the configuration guide on Cisco's website for the Office Extend AP versus uh, what you have available when you make a 3500 series access point at Office Extend AP. I've consoled into an AP and I'm going to show you what the configuration looks like when the AP is offline and not connected to a controller. And I get that local configuration from the AP by running the command show CapWap client config. It takes a second for the AP to boot, but once it boots up, I'm going to cut out some of the uh, loading time and show you the local configuration on the AP based upon the primary controller name and IP address that we configured on the access point. You can see here that the MWAR name and the MWAR IP address are the primary controller name and IP address that the AP will be trying to find. So you can verify that this is indeed what you want to be configured by doing show CapWeb client config. And if this is not correct, you would basically allow the AP to rejoin the controller and reset the primary name and IP address.